What's up people, Multiplier here and today short tutorial this time on envelope and automation editing in Ableton Live 9 because basically um, being able to do it really really quickly is super important as far as getting your ideas down because when you're feeling creative what you don't want to be doing is spending ages kind of drawing in lines a really inefficient and slow way. You want to learn all the shortcuts, know all the different ways you can manipulate the lines so when you're feeling creative you can just kind of get your idea down super quickly sorted and um, yeah they change things up going from live 8 to live 9 so um, yeah this is all live 9 stuff it's um, a lot better in my opinion anyway so let's get straight into it um, right I'm just gonna do it using the envelopes um, bit just because I mean it works exactly the same with the automation lanes but um, yeah I'm gonna be using the envelopes bit because I like it's easier to see what's going on so first important shortcut is command B I'm sure it's similar for Windows. Um, that changes it between pencil mode and non-pencil mode. So um, when it's not on pencil mode, you basically you hover over these lines and you, and you can see a node appear. So you can like kind of like click on the line and nodes appear and then you can drag them about. But if you do command B, you get pencil mode and that's when you can basically draw in kind of really precise rectangly chunks. And um, depending on what your grid is, will determine what the chunk is. So like, yeah, you just have to kind of adjust the gr your grid accordingly. Um, and kind of depending on what you want to do, it's, it's useful to know Command B changes from pencil to non-pencil. So um, you'll also notice when you're not in pencil, that's when you can start dragging around these nodes and you will spend most of your time kind of outside pencil mode. But um, it can be really, really useful to kind of jump into pencil mode if you want to be really accurate so let's say we want to start an automation exactly on 1.3 we just hop into pencil mode click there and now we know that these kind of nodes these breakpoints are exactly on the grid whereas it can be a bit um if we just undo if we're outside of pencil mode um as far as i'm aware there's no way to kind of snap this node exactly onto 1.3 so um it's quite common for me to jump into pencil mode, do that, and now we know that that node is exactly on 1.3. Um, so yeah, just the sort of thing, very quickly, by just practicing it, using the shortcuts, you'll get a feel for it and it'll be second nature. Cool, so what else is there? Well, um, when, you're not, when you're not in pencil mode, you can just drag these kind of nodes about, and you can, when you hover over it, you'll see a node appear, click to insert it, um, drag it about, that bit's all kind of obvious. Um, to get rid of a node, you hold shift and click. Um, can be quite important because what you find is if you're doing something complicated, you might end up with just a ton of nodes everywhere and it's a nightmare to see what's going on. So shift, click, gets rid of them. Um, right, curves is the next thing. Um, I'm trying to run through it quickly. Um, if you hold, I think it's called the option key on Mac, like the one that's on the alt key, but I think technically it's not called alt, it's called option. A stupid symbol. Um, hold that when you're kind of near the line and you can basically drag it into a curve, which is super cool. That wasn't the case in Live 9. Um, so that's how you can get some really cool shapes, especially when you start to kind of draw in mad, mad shit everywhere. You can just go like, ooh, cool, different. Wow, cool curves. You go, cool, cool shapes. I'm sure you can see the potential in that. Um, another important little shortcut thing is if you kind of dragging around a node and you hold shift and then you kind of pass through a node, it will basically eat it up. Um, and the difference between Live 8 and Live 9 is in Live 8, once you kind of had eaten it up, it was kind of like gone forever. There was no way of coming back and kind of leaving it there. So um, now in Live 9, as you eat it, make sure you let go of the mouse first, otherwise it won't eat it up. Because um, if you let go of shift first, it kind of, wait, um, is that right? Let me just see if I'm thinking this through. Um, let go shift first. And then yeah, it just kind of bounces back. So when you're doing that kind of holding shift eat up by the nodes, just make sure you let go of the mouse first. Otherwise it just sometimes bounces back for some strange reason. Um, it's worth knowing. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, there's something else. If you, which is another new thing for Live 9, if you, kind of get near the line but not on the line, it will, like a whole section will go blue. That allows you to pull the whole bit up and down. I don't think you could do that in Live 8. 
Um, so that's pretty cool. And then you drag out whole sections. You can kind of, you can kind of when you get near the line, you get multiple sections together, and then you can drag it all up and down. That can be quite useful, especially if say you're in um actually in automation and you're like drawing in a line for maybe transpose. You can like pull it down a whole octave, a whole section at a time. So the sort of thing. It's just useful to know about it so that when you do need to. On the odd occasion, so you drag down the whole bit, you can do it nice and simple. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Kind of tried to run through it quickly in five minutes or so, just because I tend to do a lot of long tutorials. But um, I guess the point of all this is learn the shortcuts. Um, chances are you've forgotten half the shit I said, so just watch it again. Um, know what you can do with the with the nodes and all the lines, because um, seriously, it's it is super important to be able to do it. Kind of get the line you want exactly super oh wait wait i forgot another one another quick little thing um which is really important for um pitch bend uh, if you're drawing in say envelopes not as important in the automation bit like here just because you don't for whatever reason you don't seem to have the same issue but if you want to be super accurate hold down shift and then when you drag it will kind of drag it around in smaller increments which is super important for pitch bending envelopes. For whatever reason, once you drag it off zero, you just can't seem to get it back to zero. See, it's jumping from minus 66 to 65, unless you hold command, and that kind of lets you do the fine detail. So that's another important little tip, and that's holding down command. Um, so that allows you to be super exact. Um, I think that's the last thing. So yeah, back to my point, being able to kind of manipulate it effectively and efficiently and quickly basically means when you're feeling creative you can just get your ideas down and you're not slowed down by kind of using the program because the main problem with making music on computers is sometimes you can just get you can lose your creativity just by having to actually do stuff whether it's set up a chain of effects or set up some routing or drawing in a line all that shit gets in the way of your creativity and creativity is the important bit um, to kind of being proficient at manipulating these lines um, not only saves you time but allows you to stay creative when you're feeling creative so just kind of learn it get used to it um, just in case you've forgotten the shortcuts that are relevant um, command B toggles pencil mode and non-pencil mode um, shift clicking gets rid of nodes um, if you want to eat up nodes you drag it around and hold shift weight it and make sure to let go of the mouse before shift um, I think that's it. And yeah, uh, for do to do fine detail, hold down command when you do it. And I think if you're on Windows, um, just it'll be pretty similar. So instead of the option key, it's probably Alt, and instead of command, it'll be CTRL. So similar shit. Um, yeah, and it's also worth noting you can can copy and paste sections and duplicate it. So if I've wanted to, to duplicate this section, Command D duplicates it just like you would with MIDI clips. So there'll be a few little things I might have forgotten, but kind of seem obvious to me. Um, so like copy env envelope, paste envelope, you can do all that sort of shit as well. So that can be quite useful if you kind of, because it's quite common, say, to use these envelopes to say modulate the pitch. And that's how you get your riff. So if you need to copy sections of the riff around, you can do it like that. So nice and simple. Um, fuck it, eight minutes. I still, I'm still calling this a short tutorial. Um, I've been Multiplier check me out links and shit below um, links to my label links to me on the internet um, I give out lots of free content lots of free shit um, also if you're just interested in what I'm up to follow, follow everything I do um, check out all the stuff my labels put out we put out quite a range of music and it's all awesome so sweet and um, yeah I guess one last thing would be start up my podcast again relentic radio so check that out on soundcloud or itunes just search for relentic radio or relentic and um it's pretty cool starting that up again if you like your podcasts um so yeah have fun editing envelopes and automation and shit bye